could you make money betting on UFC fights? Well, let me ask you this. Could you meet Kim Kardashian and make her fall in love with you and marry you? Could you? Maybe. Will you? No. Now, I will fully admit I'm not a professional gambler or as they like to call themselves, a guru. No, I'm just a guy who loves MMA and likes to gamble while doing so. So this is not for gambling advice. This is only my experience gambling on fights. But first, a little detail. I live in Minnesota where there is no legal sports betting, only casino or horse racing. So to place a bet on an MMA fight, I have to travel to Diamond Jewel Worth Casino, two hours south of Minnesota. The two hour drive goes by pretty quickly, so it's not bad. And the casino has a nice spacious lounge area to watch the fights with the bedding window right in the room. So my first trip to the casino was for UFC 259, Adesanya versus Blashowitz. And my betting strategy, if there is one, is to bet fighters with a known history of strong fights. They don't quit or tap out when the going gets tough. They dig deep. They have that championship mentality. So for UFC 59, I knew Blasius's history. He's a physical, aggressive fighter, and I felt that he would be too much for Adesanya. I was confident that he would win. And for that card, I went with a parlay of Blasius. Peter Yan, Amanda Nunes. Blashowitz was the only underdog. Yan and Nunes were favorites. I was confident in both of them. Nunes, of course, because of her attitude and her stature. And Yan, because Peter Yan is old school. He's going to fight aggressive until the very last breath. My mistake on this card was also including Tiago Santos. Now, Tiago Santos is one of my favorite fighters, but I knew that he was coming off surgery and I still got swayed by his history. He's one of the most savage and physical fighters the UFC has ever seen. His fights with John Jones and Jim Manoa, those are classics of brutality. There's only a handful of guys in the division that can handle that type of aggression. So for UFC 259, I went with the parlay of Amanda Nunes, minus 900, Jan Blaschewitz, plus 190, Peter Jan, minus 134, and Tiago Santos, plus 154. I bet $200 for a payout of $2,858.50, which is an eye-popping return on an investment of just 200 I was so confident in this parlay that I went back twice to the betting window. I bet $400 more on these four fighters. So I bet a total of $600 for a uh, payout of close to 10000 However, I was very soon about to find out why the parlay queen is easy to see, but very difficult to catch. Within the first round of the Tiago Santos versus Alexander Rockick fight, I knew my parlay was in big trouble. The fighter that had battered John Jones and assaulted Jim Manuel was not in the building. You could see Tiago had the will, but the body was failing. I had also done a rookie job in not doing enough research on Alexander Rockick. So Santos lost a decision, and just like that, my parlay was done. Even if all the other fighters won their matches, I wouldn't collect because in a parlay, all fighters in the parlay have to win in order for you to collect. So, I still although had some faith in the remaining fighters in my parlay. Uh, Peter Jan, Amanda Nunes, Jan Blaschowitz. Uh, so I returned to the betting window and put an additional $300 on this parlay. A total payout would be $1,750.25. Not as astronomical as the first parlay, but still a decent winning night. Peter Yan started things off, and this fight proceeded pretty much as I expected. 
Jan was controlling and slowly beginning to impose his will. And then the knee happened. For whatever reason, this bizarre circumstance always seems to pop out in prize fighting. A ref makes a confounding call. One of the fighters pokes the opponent in his eye. Somebody parachutes into the fucking ring. Or the clearly winning and a head on points fighter bites the other guy's ear or knees his opponent and gets disqualified and ends up losing. Peter Young got penalized for the illegal knee and a weeping Sterling was awarded the victory. For the second time of the night, my parlay went up in smoke. $900 disappeared over the horizon. Now, in a desperate attempt to salvage, to salvage some of that loss, I went to the ATM, withdrew $900 more from my account, and tried to make some small recovery at the blackjack table. I lost that too. So basically, my first attempt at sports betting ended up a $1,800 absolute and total disaster. The 900 I had lost on the Tiago Santos parlay was somewhat avoidable. You have to be wary of fighters coming off major surgery, even if you like them. And you shouldn't bet against an opponent that you know nothing about. Now, the $900 loss with the Peter Jan, Amanda Nunes, and Jan Blaschewitz parlay could not have been avoided, I don't think, because no way anyone can foresee that the winning fighter will commit an illegal offense and get himself disqualified. And if it wasn't for that knee issue, Peter Jan would have won his fight because he was clearly winning the fight. And I would have collected because Jan Blaschewitz won his fight and Amanda Nunes won her fight. However, we all know if Wooders were Kudas, we all be Buddha. So for my second attempt at sports betting, I returned to Diamond Joe Casino for UFC 269, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal. Again, I decided to go with the four fighter parlay. Jimmy Crute, minus 245. Valentina Shevchenko, minus 450. Wei Lei Zhang, minus 205, and Kamara Usman, minus 350. I was super confident in Kamara Usman and Valentina Shevchenko. They are both dominant champions who fight dominant. I was slightly less confident in Jimmy Crute as I've only had seen him maybe one or two fights before, and I felt that Wei Lei Zhang would be a more physical fighter than Rose Nama Yunus, and she would take that match. So for this parlay, I bet $1,000. My total payoff would be $3,330.50. First up was Jimmy Crute, ranked ninth in the division versus Anthony Smith, ranked fourth. That ranking should have screamed red light to me from the beginning because number four to number nine is a pretty sizable difference. But I was swayed by the talk of Anthony Smith being shot and with Jimmy Crute being bigger and seven years younger, I felt he was gonna be too much for Anthony Smith. Once again, just as in my first foray into sports betting, by the first round of that fight, the very first fight in the parlay, I knew my parlay was in trouble. Crute didn't seem to have a clue as to how to defend the stiff jab. He just kept walking in and getting tore up. He was game, and he fired off some combos and haymakers, but he never put Anthony Smith in any trouble or forced him to back up. And then the parlay god strike, and as Jimmy Crute is doing his best to adjust, his leg goes out. It looked like his ankle just buckled. Hideously. It was difficult to watch. But credit to Crute, he still wanted to fight. But he couldn't walk. He couldn't even put any weight on the leg. And the doctor had no choice but to stop the fight. Anthony Smith wins. And for the second time in a month, 
a night of parley is going up in total smoke. What have I done to deserve this? So $1,000 disappears. Gone. Now, no matter what Weili Zhang or Amanda Nunes or Valentina Shevchenko do, it's irrelevant to my parlay because Crute lost his fight. Now, as you know, desperate men do desperate things. So I decided to try to recover with a new parlay on the remaining fighters. I had zero concern that Kamaru Uzma would lose. I knew he would win. I was very confident Kamaru Uzma would win. I was also very confident Valentina Shevchenko would win. Uh, Wei Lei Zhang was a little different. She was only a minus 205 favorite, which should have sent a little bit of warning bells, but I was convinced that she was going to be too aggressive and, and, and she was going to take it to uh, Rose Nama Yunus and she would win. So I went back to the window after this $1,000 disaster and I bet on the three remaining fighters, Wei Lei Zhang at minus 205, Valentina Shevchenko at minus 450 and Kamara Usman as minus, at minus 350. All money line. I bet $880. My payoff would be $2,057.50. Again, nothing astronomical, but just enough to recover from the $1,000 bloodbath and a little bit extra. So Valentina is on first and she does what a dominant champion does impose her will she cruises the victory with the ko in round two one down two to go next up is Zhang versus nama Yunus. now i have to admit i was one of the doubters maybe i was swayed by her gentle nature her sweetness and her looks but i felt that she would not be able to match Zhang in aggression or stamina i was deeply mistaken the difference in skill was not even close Rose was dancing and creating magic, and Zhang looked lost. That head kick is one of the greatest KOs in UFC history. Brutally perfect. So Zhang loses by first round KO, and once again, another parlay night ends. Complete disaster. $1,880 lost to the breeze. Trying to think of a positive spin to all of this, but I see none. I did the two worst things you can do in betting sports. Totally overlook one fighter while completely overstating, overrating their opponent. However, as they say, nothing of value comes without sacrifice. And if one day I hope to make a little of my money back from betting on sports, Perhaps I have to lose some to win some. I'm pretty sure that even the great gamblers of the world, people like Phil Helmuth, I'm sure they lost some early t uh, bets too. So as you can see, I have won nothing from my sports bets. So the answer to the question in the video, can you make money from sports betting? I would have to say no, because I tried. And I haven't. Not yet. So what do you think? Should I keep trying? Or should I just pack it up?